So we're going to have, I want, I want to share really a testimony of how, how this came together and, and kind of God's hand in it. And then we're going to, Michael and Kyle are going to join the conversation and we're not done yet. We're going to end with prayer and we're going to believe for God to move right now in the midst of this conflict and, and uh, we're going to all leave with God's heart for Israel. How many want that? Um, I want to read one verse real quick before we, we start this. Just You guys are a house of prayer, the DNA of, of Upper Room, which I've been privileged to be a part of some of the early days and you know, establishing a lot of the theology for this house and, and um, you know, what you guys do, pray day and night and the whole restoration of the Tabernacle of David. Anybody like that? It's cool to have somebody here from literally from the tribe of Levi. <laughs> um, Amos 9-11, it says this. I, I want to just throw this out there for you to think about and pray about in the coming days um, so that you understand the seasons that we live in right now. We're the first generation that's living in the confluence of these three great prophetic words culminating together. Um. And, and it's a big deal. It says in Amos 9, 11, in that day, I'll restore David's fallen shelter. I'll repair its broken walls, restore its ruins, build it as it used to be so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name. So the restoration of the tabernacle of David, the restoration of worship. How many of you guys know in the, in, the, in the 90s, the house of prayer movement exploded across the earth. There wasn't, there wasn't probably three day and night worship and prayer places on the earth as of the late 90s, now there's thousands. Isn't that awesome? People are praying day and night in almost every single nation on the earth. You guys do it here, morning, noon, and night. God is moving sovereignly to restore this promise. And this is repeated again, by the way, in Acts 15, 16. Um, but then it says this. The days are coming, declares the Lord, where the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine, someone say new wine, will drip from the mountains and flow from all the hills and I will bring back my people Israel back from exile. Some of y'all read verse 11, you, you didn't read verse 13. It goes along right with it. It says this, they will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. So check this out. We're living in 2023 in the confluence of the greatest house of prayer movement, the restoration of the tabernacle of David that leads unto the greatest missions movement that all of Edom or humanity may seek the Lord and Israel back in their own land. Somebody say, it's good to be alive. Like seriously, like, please, that's what I was saying in the beginning. Stop scrolling. Like, like, we are the first generation that's lived in this prophetic promise. And so we're here today. And, um, and this is just such a cool story. Because, and I'm going to let you guys tell it. I'm going to just tell the beginning. And then you guys are going to tell it. So she grew up in Lebanon. He grew up in Israel. Miles apart from each other. Bordering countries. Both of their nations were bombing each other. And they grew up at the same time living in and out of bomb shelters. These two did. And now they're standing on a stage singing to God in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Talk about that for a minute. Talk about that. Where you guys came from, how you met each other. Give us the story, this story of the song. Um, for me, my journey started like when the Lord in 2016, I, I heard a rabbi speaking about Israel on Yom Kippur and it happened to be, I'm doing an internship there and, um, I heard him and I, and something like was completely removed in front of my, like a veil was removed and I saw Israel in a way I never seen through God's heart. And then I start searching from that time and start listening to like Hebrew worship and, uh, and the Lord. Oh, I was actually very um, um, angry 
at Israel because I was born, you know, as Sean said, I was born and raised in war and I was traumatized from the bombing. It's, uh, it's, it was very hard childhood there. And we had family member who died. We had so many, th like, Palestinian came to Lebanon, they bombed Lebanon, killed Christians, massacred Christians. We have Syrian, and then we had Israel came and did their part, you know, and, uh, but so, so anyway, it's just like, I was very angry, especially when I was around, like, uh, I think I was around, let me see, 11. Uh, there was war, 2000, uh, 1996, I think, and, um, and it was very, very, like, it literally, like awaken all the trauma again in my life. And I was so angry at them because of their, they had lots of power with their jets. We didn't have any jets. So they used to always come with their sonic bomb. You know, like it's very, like it was, it literally broke our glass. That's how bad it was. Just, it was not bombing. It was just those sonic sound. So I, I remember one time in that war, we left our area because we wanted to go to, away, like more deep in the Christian. It's kind of like separated, like area is Christian and area is Muslim. So we went more deep in the Christian area Area. And I remember I went to the mountain. I was just happy. I was, it was peaceful. And then I, <laughs> there was electricity company and uh, Israel came with their jet where I was in the same area, like literally a few miles away. I can see them just, and they bombed the electricity company. And I was very angry. Uh, but I, <laughs> I was like, you followed me here. I'm trying to be in peace here and to be able to get over my trauma. But anyway, um, but I remember my parents never ever uh, get us to hate Israel. Like, they never told us anything bad to hate on them because I don't know, I don't know if even Yair know, and uh, that my family told me that if it wasn't of the Israeli actually giving weapons to the Christian because there was a war between Muslim and Christian, I probably, I wouldn't have been here because of they give us weapon for my family and for whoever to fight against the Muslim who was trying to kill all Christians. So I think it's even a miracle we're still here. Uh, my uncle actually is here. He, he was one of the people um, who, you know, he came to Yeshua, Jesus first and he brought us to, to Jesus. Um, I just want to mention that. And he go to Messianic synagogue for 17 years. Like you've never seen Lebanese go to be with Jews, you know, for 17 years and his heart is for Israel. So, you know, I think, you know, it's in our family. We just, we just like to be rebels, you know, for Jesus. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, what else? So the song. Oh, the song, yeah. Um, so, so, I, so what happened is when I start um, in 2020, oh, yeah, yeah. go ahead. I just wanted to say, don't tell her. Let's see if it's true. You know, <laughs> don't, don't tell her what to say. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh. <laughs> oh, it was just a joke. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so in 2020, I I heard the Lord telling me, you need to start talking to people from Israel. I'm like, I don't know anyone. I'm not supposed to talk to his, these people. How am I going to find someone? So I start from the people I was listening to. I start going to Instagram, thank God. So I find someone, I was talking to her. She's a sweet, beautiful, like, girl singing to, you know, singing worship. And, and it happened, COVID happened, you know, in April, you know, 2020, uh, she released a song with him. Like, if I didn't meet her, I wouldn't have known Yair in that, just like two months, a matter of two months, three months. So he, they released the song together and I heard it and I cried from the first time I heard it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, why am I crying? I don't even know what they're saying. It really, I knew in my spirit, you know, thank God we know how God can move in our life and our, you know, and I knew there's something about it. So I messaged her, I'm like, can you tell me what are you singing? So she told me it was just the healing and the Lord right away is like, I want you to sing this song for your, for your country and between your country and Israel. I'm like, how do I do this? So anyway, so I, I wear a Lebanese hat and I played the song and I put my head down because I didn't want anyone to see me, not thinking they're gonna see my name on Instagram, but I was trying to play it uh, safe. But uh, I, and I tagged him and that's how, you know, we connected. You can go ahead and say that part. I'm, uh, as I said, a former IDF captain and I released a song for my grandma. She was uh, sick. And it's become like, uh, I, I had a lot of people started to, to translate it to different languages. El Narefan Amla, you heard this song. Um, and suddenly I got message in a video in Arabic. Someone sing it in Arabic, as she said, with the hat in, of Lebanon. 
And think about it, like for me, Lebanon is, 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 is a place for, of war. Um, I didn't answer her at the beginning. I didn't know what to do. Sorry, but this is like, <laughs> this is the truth. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, is it real? It's like, how can it be? Um, and then it's become much harder because she said, after I heard the song and it was so beautiful, um, I just, she asked me, can you sing with me in Arabic? And I said, uh, okay. And we released it in the Middle East. And it was like, uh, and it's because it's be it become like something that we didn't expect at all. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the spoken man in Arabic of Benjamin Netanyahu, just tweeted on Twitter and said, like, this is what Hezbollah is afraid of. And then it became like super viral in all of the Middle East. We had interviews in, in El Arabi and a lot of TV uh, channels. And I think Karin got a lot of threads. And Hezbollah came to, to search her family. And it was, it was crazy. It's, it's the real thing. You know, music make them something, the Hezbollah, that they felt that they don't want us to worship together. And this is, we said in the last time when we spoke that this is the reason why we have to do this. Because this is a sign for us. If the Hezbollah is fighting against singers, it means that song and worship is something very important, you know? And um, that's it, I think. Yeah, so, um, so after that, you know, we, we really felt we want to do more songs. And... Then a war happened, and I just mentioned how this written, I wrote the song, and, and then I left it, and then I'm like, okay, so what now? So I reach out to Yair, I'm like, hey, what do you think about this song? And um, from the, I remember, he's like, he's like, Karin, it's beautiful, we have to do it, let's, let's do this. So I told him we need an American person, I don't know who that's gonna, who that person's going to be. So uh, it took a little bit of time, and the Lord showed me, it was Sean. And I'm like, <laughs> Lord. In the time when he's just going all over in America with all the just the things he's going for the church and just like everything was going on and I'm like, Lord, he's <laughs> he's everywhere. How am I gonna get to talk to him? <laughs> you know? And I was just like, I, I can. It's, uh, no, I'm like, maybe this is me thinking. And then he he showed me a dream, and I'm like, oh Lord. And I know when he showed me a dream. It's like when you know, when he show you from something from him, you know that you know. And my journey, it was all like this. Even doing worship, it was through just the crazy dreams and crazy visions. Um, I've only do, been doing this for four years. I haven't really do worship in church. I was in my bathroom and in my bedroom. And it's just, yeah, that, it's miracle alone. But anyway, so, um, so yeah, I, I, start, I start, you know, uh, reaching out. And the Lord just like, I... He's like, you have to keep pressing. There is a war and you have to fight for it because this is a song, it's a weapon. So he's like, Karin, show me how much can you fight for me through this getting to the right people to gather them because it's going to take a battle to gather people sometime. So I'm just like, all right, Lord. So I kept on pressing. There was time I give up. I'll tell you that I give up. You know, I'm like, no, but thank God my sister, like, you know that your dream's going to happen. You know, like your husband came to Jesus, you know, through a dream, you know, from Mormonism, you know, like all these things, you know. And, and it's just crazy. Like my family, my mom, my grandma, they all came to Jesus. So I'm like, I knew that. He's just like, you know that it's, it's Sean. You have to just go for it, Karine. So, and again, I just start again. And okay, Lord, it's not happening. But then he came to San Diego. And I, he came to do a worship night. And I told him, Lord, I don't want to go. I want to prefer stay home. I want to start my year worshiping you home. I don't want to be just trying to be there and my head is not with you so I stayed home and I worshiped with my family and you know for new year and the first dream I had in 1-1 2023 was a part two of the dream of the first dream that, that it's him and I have to keep pressing on and he showed me vision like picture of someone on his team to be able to know like whenever I see her it's gonna be her who's gonna help me with that and she's actually here um, and but anyway and uh, so it's just like I kept on pressing on and the Lord just like you know he's like Karin just keep pressing and so I told one one day in February I was like Lord his heart is not for Israel it's for America for America like and two days after he posted he's going to Israel and I'm just like okay 
All right, there's hope there. So anyway, he went to, he went to Israel and he was walking with his wife with a video and with the, you know doing a video and I'm like, "Oh, this it'll be I'm like I wonder if he's walking in Yair's streets, you know, because he was in the same t in Tel Aviv." And I and I was like, "It'll be hilarious, Lord, if he can actually meet with Yair, with Yair in Israel." So two days after, on Wednesday, I said the same thing. I'm like, Lord, it'll be very funny if they, it was second time. And on Thursday, I was sitting and I look at my phone. I see them both standing together and they're worshiping. And I'm like, I called my uncle too. I'm like, I'm like, can you see this? Like, <laughs> am I the only one seeing this? And, um, and it happened that, you know, Sean, we were able to connect from that time. And he heard the song for the first time actually in Israel. Cool. <laughs> Maybe a little slow, but I'll, I'll get with it. Um, so anyway, we're, we're going to release this song, which is just going to be awesome. Excited about it. But I feel like more, you know, one of the things I love about um, worship and I love about songs and, you know, I've had the uh, privilege of, you know, worshiping in Afghanistan after 9-11 and, you know, worshiping in the front lines with Kurdish Peshmerga soldiers that are getting ready to fight ISIS in Iraq and being in North Korea and a lot of crazy places around the world. But songs, they, they go to places where, 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 where the media can't go. They go to places where propaganda can't go. They, go, they bypass biases in our mind and they hit our heart. I mean, we've sung the song of the Lord through the Middle East, and, and, and it's powerful what God can do. And so I, I just feel like even t today, like, like I wish that the Church of America, who's who we're really speaking to tonight, would lay down their opinions and their suggestions and, 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 and get together and worship God and say, Lord, what is your heart for this nation? You promised us, you know, you made a covenant with this land and I can trust you in the promises over my life because you're faithful with the promises over Israel. And so tonight we, we want to share a little bit about that. And Michael and Kai, why don't you guys come up here and, and we're going to talk for a little bit about the church's response. Can we give it up for these guys? And, um, and then we're going to go into prayer and, and, and we're going we're gonna to pray and activate some of this. And we're also going to pray over Yair before he heads back to war tomorrow. Um, but Michael. I wanted to thank Yair. What a beautiful heart. And just thank you for leading us. And then Corinne. Is it, Corinne, is that your, uh, the guitarist? Yaniv. I, I had the wrong intel. Thank you. You are an amazing guitarist. Like, that was just such a beautiful... Um, and, um, and I think how we, we... Your videos that you shared and the testimonies that you shared, we will not forget those. And um, we... You are looking at people that have been praying for you and your nation, and uh, we're standing with you. And uh, we wanted to host a night, really, of prayer for Israel. Um, but I, I have my friend Kyle Martin, which, uh, Kyle is a pastor in town and I went to Israel in 2020 for the first time. And next to, next to meeting the Holy spirit in a very personal way, I don't know if something that's transformed me more than going to the Holy land and walking those sites. I felt like I discovered a part of the Lord that I did not know. I, I, I had an appreciation and honor for Israel, but I, I feel like I fell in love with her. Uh, and fell in love with a, a part of Jesus that I, I didn't know until I went. And Kyle has been instrumental uh, from a theological standpoint, a teaching standpoint, and helping me put my arms around uh, God's, God's heart and the covenants. And so I wanted, I wanted just to hear from you, Kyle, and what you're thinking tonight, what, what, how this is hitting your heart um, in regards for Israel, and, and really how we as the church need to respond. You need a mic. Uh, you know, first of all, it's an honor uh, just to be with you guys. Um, I, I think the church needs to do more of this. 
And what is this? Uh, this means you're going back to the word. Uh, it is the worship side, but I think what's happened with the church in America specifically is that for some weird reason we have disregarded the Torah and the Tanakh, the 39 books. Because you see what happens is when you study the Moses and the law and the prophets, you actually begin to understand what's happening today. The reason I think that we're seeing all these protests in America and these colleges and even confusion in the church is because of a lack of knowledge of the Word of God. Yeah. That, that's really all this comes down to. It's not, it's not some complicated thing. Look, the reality is it says in Psalm 83, there are nations that are gonna attempt to wipe out your people. But you have to understand why. Because in Genesis 3.15 it says there's a battle that's going on with the seed. And here's what I want to say is, is why are they trying to wipe out the nations? Why is the nation trying to wipe out Israel? Because of the seed comes from Israel. In Galatians 3, 6, it says the seed, and, and look, I know that our brother here, he's Jewish, but you can still talk about Jesus around Jews. Is that fair? You can talk around, about Jesus around Arabs. You don't have to be afraid of that. And we know that all throughout the Old Testament, if you begin to understand the word, you'll see it's a battle the whole way through Malachi. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And what's gonna happen is, is that there's a fight no matter what. Whether you see it, and remember what happened with Moses? What did they try to do? Try to kill the babies. And you see that over and over. You see that with Haman, right, and Esther. What did they try to do? Wipe out the Israelites. This is a thread of the enemy. One reason, the seed. So I want to challenge you. Yes, you can watch the news if you want. But when you get into the word of God, this thing comes to life. That's right. And let's make it really, really clear. This isn't meant to be controversial. It's real. We have not replaced these guys. Can I, if you guys have the word real quick, I want to read one verse and I'll stop after that, Michael. It's good. Because I, I'm telling you, if you go to Deuteronomy, Lord, there's so many verses here. Go to Deuteronomy 14, can we? Deuteronomy 14, 12. Look, if you're not Jewish, you know what you are? You're a Gentile. There, there's no complications about that. Deuteronomy 14, specifically verse, just start in uh, verse two. For you are a holy people, Belonging to the Lord your God. The Lord has chosen you to be his, what, look at this, his own possession out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. Wow. It's not America. It's not Russia. It's not China. It's not Indonesia. It's not Singapore. It's not the Bahamas. It's not Jamaica. It is Israel. So this little, little piece of land the size of Jersey you know, anywhere between 10 to 14 million Jews, however you look at the population, God's hand is on those people and he's not done yet. So what's gonna happen is, is that you are watching the news unfold, but you're really just watching scripture come to life. Wow. Why do we support our brothers and sisters? Because we know that the Messiah comes from them. And so Michael had asked as a church, what, what can we do in America? One, I think this is very simple, you pray. Psalm 122, we had an opportunity. We traveled with the Knesset, the Jerusalem prayer breakfast. We traveled and we prayed with Jews and Christians and we cried out to the Lord. But I want you to go to one more text and then I'm done. Romans 15, this is important because I think this ties it all in. If you go to the words, go to Romans 15, 25, 26, and 27. So your number one obligation is pray for, and by the way, it says the peace of Jerusalem, not Israel. I know that's a theological deal, but in Jerusalem is the heart of God. It's, that's his city. I, we love Tel Aviv, but it is Jerusalem. True. Okay, thanks, Ayer. Ayer knows that. That's why the Levites go to Jerusalem, right? He knows. That's where, by the, well, man, we could get into end times all we want. Romans 15, here's your second responsibility, okay? 25, verse 25. Right now, he says this, I'm traveling to Jerusalem to serve the saints for Macedonia and Achaia were pleased to make a contribution, look what this says, for the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. Verse 27, it says, yes, they were pleased and indeed are indebted to them. For if the Gentiles 
have shared in their spiritual benefits, then they are obligated to minister to Jews in material needs. If you believe in Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you know what the scripture says? You need to sow into the Israelites. You need to sow into the Jews because the heritage comes from these guys. So pray and actually financially support them. Those are two practical ways that I believe we can support our brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. I, will, would, I need your help now, okay? With, with the English lyrics. Please open Ezekiel 7. Verse number 23. When the terrible things happened in Israel, October 7, day number 7, Shabbat, in the 23 of months Tishrei in the Hebrew calendar. Can you please read? You said Ezekiel 7, yeah. verse 23. 23, yeah. Forge the chain. Forge the chain. For the land is filled with crimes of bloodshed. In Hebrew, for uh, chain, it means hostage. And the city is filled with violence. Do you know how the Hebrew Bible say violence? Hamas. That's right. Another one. Another one. Because you said that we need to learn the Torah and the Tanakh. Torah, yeah, That's right. and the Tanakh. Um, it's a Psalms 11. It's all hidden in the Bible. Amen. A lot of secrets in Hebrew, by the way. Uh, so Psalms 11. Which verse? Um, all, all, all the, all the chapter. It's, it's the whole chapter. chapter. Yeah, sorry, it's short, okay. but it's short. Yeah. I have taken refuge in the Lord. How can you say to me, escape to the mountain like a bird? For look, the wicked string the bow. They put the arrow on the bowstring to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When so, so this battle is. King David said it's a, it's a battle about two things. True. First, it's a battle, it's a fight. Yeah. But second, it's about the heart of those who are honest. That's right. right? When the foundations are destroyed. If I'm wrong, so say no. Okay? Okay, <laughs> I will. Yeah. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes watch. He examines everyone. The Lord examines the righteous and the wicked. He hates the lover of violence. He hates the lovers of Hamas. Verse 6, it says, He will rain burning coals and sulfur on the wicked. A scorching wind will be their portion. I mean, Psalm 11, verse 7, For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright will see his face. It means that we need to understand that God don't only hate violence, he ate, and this is, he hate, right. and this is exactly what's happening right now. This is the prophecy of now. He hate Hamas, but he will take care of the honest heart. Amen. We just need to trust him. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Wow. <clears throat> I think the thing that's important to understand <clears throat> geopolitically is that some of the worst Christian persecution in the world right now is Gaza. Hamas executes Christians, Palestinian Christians. Like they've executed and killed them. Barbaric, right? But check this out. The son of the Hamas leader is a revivalist. That's like the weakest clap I've ever heard in my life. Like, have you seen? No, no, listen, listen, hold on, hold on. Have you seen the interviews? I mean, we've seen the darkest of the darkest ISIS guys come to Jesus. I, we've seen it in the Middle East. Right now, the son of Hamas is traveling around. He's going to be at my friend's church next week in Seattle. He preaches God, he preaches about Jesus. He preaches love for Israel. The son of the main leader. So, I mean, don't think that too, hearts are too hard or too dark. Now, tonight we're praying 
that God would expose the evil deeds, that there would be success in getting, I mean, there's still 222 hostages. There's seven Americans. I mean, this is how crazy it is. If there were seven Americans that were hostage in any other nation, we would have got them back by now. But somehow, some way, this becomes political. And it becomes difficult and it becomes complicated. Can we just say tonight, it's not complicated. Right? It's not complicated. And I have been, I have worshipped in Palestinian refugee camps. And the first thing that happens when they fall in love with Jesus is they get God's heart for Israel. Amen? Amen. And so what we want to do tonight, this is your marching orders. We're going to stand up and, and, and I just, I feel like we need to pray. We're going to have the band come up. Michael and Kyle and, and these guys are going to help lead us and then we're going to pray over Yair. But, but I feel like it's important for us tonight because by the way, again, I, I just want to remind you this prophetic thing I had, right? Everything that can be shaken can be shaken. This is not an issue that is going away. The first time I ever went to Israel, I had this I was praying by the Temple Mount, and I'm like always doing things you're not supposed to do, so I, I just like walked up on the Temple Mount, and I was walking around singing, and, and these, <laughs> these Muslim guys came up to me, you can't sing here, and I'm like, why not? And as I was up there, and I don't think you can even go there today, but I saw this picture of every single principality and power in the world was connected to that place. And then as we begin to worship there, and this is why we, of course, we support Israel, but we support houses of prayers in Israel. We've got a lot of friends with a lot of houses of prayers. They need our support now. They need our support. Sukkot Hillel is a great one. Rick Ridings, the whole crew there, we love them. But I saw this picture that as we begin to worship there, I saw these, these, these ropes that were attached from there into every other place around the world. And then as we begin to worship, they begin to shake. That is the most fought after real estate. It is the episode. I mean, people that, that go to Jerusalem, they, I, I felt peace like I never felt in my life. I never feel peace there. I feel the raging conflict. I can't sleep when I go there. I like the idea of being there, but the reality, I don't know if I could live there because I get so wound up because that is the final end of the age showdown. That's where it's all going down. And we just so happen to be alive where I believe we're in the middle of it. It's happening. And it's so important for us as believers to have the heart of God so that we pray the right things and that we stand for the right things and that we believe the word of the Lord. Amen.